Hello everyone and welcome uh, finally to a new movie habitat. In today's build we are going to dive deep into the fantasy world of a lot of the rings, especially the Shire today. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit more about this project in the next couple of minutes, but first of all let me introduce you um, to this uh, series again. Uh, so if you don't know, I do some kind of movie habitats every now and then. So I've done already two of the kind. Uh, the first one being Planet of the Apes, you can check this link in the description, or also a Star Wars related Dagobah habitat. Uh, also both if uh, you want to watch them are in the description below. In today's video, it's the first part, so it's the first movie habitat that is split into two actually. The main reason is that it's just taking way too long. And also um, I, I had a little bit of a struggle if I want to release it already. I wanted to wait if there is potentially going to be a DLC or if there's uh, something going on, but with all the uncertainties of the current uh, worldwide situation, I thought it doesn't really matter to wait uh, any longer because you never know what's gonna happen the next couple of days. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys have something to discover, something really crazy, something really cool, uh, and just uh, you know have some have some good time at home and, and watching uh, this build. So actually this build is quite a few weeks old already. Um, I'm already a lot further than what you will see today in the end, um, but I'm going to explain that a little bit in detail now. So many, many people have been voting um, over the course of the past couple months which kind of uh, habitats they wanted to have, and Lord of the Rings was definitely one of the things that uh, stood out and, and many people voted for and so I decided okay what could you do and here's here's my little twist on that so I am not going to build a movie habitat that is purely a recreation of something it's I feel it's bad because it's just what would you do with it you know it's kind of a, a you, you have then the rebuild of let's say the Hogwarts castle you know um, but it doesn't really make sense because what would you do with it yes it, it would kind of look awesome and stuff but it's not really it's not really necessarily that what you want to have, you know, you want to have something that transports the magic or the, the feeling, the atmosphere of the movie, but on the other hand side, it should work like a habitat that could be built, you know, could be built realistically with a, with a million of dollars or a billion of dollars, you know. The idea about this is always that you have something usable that you can use in the game um, and that you feel like could work as a habitat. And so in that kind of sense, I also want to make sure that the animals that go in there, in these habitats, make uh, make sense in the way the habitat is laid out and, you know, can still enjoy the habitat uh, in the way it is. And uh, therefore I always try to translate my ideas from the given movie into the um, distinct habitat. And in today's episode you will see the habitat for what will be the adult sheep, the pronghorn, and I'm not really sure if I will put in uh, some more animals, but um, I think these kind of animals would go very well indeed into the Shire area of Lord of the Rings. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically the area where the hobbits are living. Um, but yeah, what are you doing here if you don't know what the Shire is, you know? it's uh, That would be some kind of a, a, a weird situation uh, being in that video then. Now, I laid this... Uh, I laid this habitat out in a way that you have some tunnels, which the first of uh, which we are going to build at the moment, and this is kind of the prototype uh, that will be the only one that is actually usable. Main reason is that I didn't want to put in too many crazy pieces because it's it's getting a little leggy um, the moment I build this kind of stuff too close to each other. Still, Planet Zoo struggles a little bit when you have uh, pieces too dense uh, in an area, uh, and then kind of the lag is going to happen. Um, in, in general, the game handles the FPS way better than before, and uh, also you can use a whole bunch more pe pieces in one build. Uh, the only thing is you don't have to, uh, you don't, you shouldn't have them in in one condensed area. You should definitely try to spread them a little bit further across, and that's what I did. But yeah, you can see I'm I'm taking a lot of inspiration, obviously, from the movie scene um, in New Zealand uh, where they built these uh, little checks and stuff, and I'm using basically the same trick that the movie also used. I'm using a little bit of fast perspective later on. So we are building some kind of uh, some kind of these shelters that are a bit bigger, uh, where the guests can actually watch through. And then I'm also going to build some that are smaller, so that in in kind of fast perspective you can uh, tell that there is a little bit more uh, difference in there, and the animals will definitely seem bigger than they are because the shacks are a lot smaller than they actually are. So the only thing I need to do later on is make sure that the animals can still go in and have their little bedding in there. But yeah, 
So today's episode is only about the Shire. I'm not really sure which kind of uh, thumbnail I'm going to use. I have some cool thumbnails prepared for it. Maybe there is already something to see and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to keep this uh, secret because you will see this in the second episode, which I don't really know when exactly it's uh, going to happen. Maybe next week, maybe the week after. It depends a little bit on how much time I will have this week. Potentially a lot of time though, but um, yeah. So the, the first episode is about the Shire and here's me again talking about the special attempt I have on these habitats. I don't want to I don't want to make realistic sizes or whatever. So this will be a split habitat. In the middle there will be a split and the second area will be let's say something for the hyenas. It's very stereotyped though, but it's going to be it's going to be something with a tower. It's going to be something very dark. It's going to be something with a more or less factory appeal if that makes sense. It's not really factory, but well in a, in a way it is factory. So for the fans of Lord of the Rings, you will potentially know already what this is going to be. But yeah, uh, I can tell you uh, the tower is going to be amazing. So please make sure if you if you want to see that and you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing because then you will be notified when it is or you just keep on searching for a lot of rings habitat for whatever reason you want to do this. But yeah, you can see here already this is the split I'm going to go for. But um, yeah, it's for for the moment it's only there uh, for me as a hint. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot more in detail later on, and I also have to make sure how uh, exactly the staff members will be able to go in. So at this point in time, it's not really a habitat in that kind of sense. I'm just preparing it, but the barriers are not really laid out. I'm not even sure I, I did this. I'm not even sure if that's in the episode or not, but yeah. So now we are going to build the first design for the first house. You can see we are only six and a half minutes in. That means a whole bunch of time went into making these houses. And let me tell you, that was a blast doing that. It had, you know, it had been such a cool experience to watch the movie again. So I watched the first, let's say, half an hour of, of Lord of the Rings uh, in preparation of this habitat to make sure that I, I get the vibe of the Shire again like yeah you can you can always look at screenshots and stuff but you know watching the movie and and the moment when Gandalf um, comes into the little little Hobbiton uh, town and uh, Frodo is, is really much awaiting him and you see them you see them uh, with this uh, cart carriage um, going into the town and you can see all all the different um, you know, little houses and the fishering, uh, fishery huts and stuff like that, and and everything is just like so calm and nice and and fantasyish, and it's kind of, it, it's bringing it's bringing such a cool vibe back. So for once, obviously, because of the time when I watched this, I've been oh god, I don't know, twelve, I don't know how old was I, eleven, twelve, thirteen. When was the first movie release? I don't even know. Um, but yeah, I was I was smaller, <laughs> a lot more uh, time to be happy and uh, have less concerns about the world and stuff like that so it's been really easy to dive deep into the fantasy world and this is kind of what I want to translate into this as well something that gives you really the feeling um, of being back in this magical world even though it's gonna be very dark uh, later on in Lord of the Rings but this first uh, minutes are uh, super playful super happy and uh, yeah, it's it's a magical world that you want to dive into. It's it's so cool, and I I love this first minutes of the movie uh, because they they give you such a wonderful feeling of what the Shire is. And uh, I think for those of you who read the book, um, I think it it was one of the best things they did in the movie how they translated this wonderful atmosphere into the books uh, into the movie. All right, and uh, here I'm back again. Sorry, I need to cut my voice a little bit because I am having still my pollen allergy. Uh, don't worry, it's pollen allergy. I, I, I promise. Um, and so my my voice is not uh, easy to hold on to for longer than five to six minutes before it's going to break again. Uh, it's such a nasty thing. I, I should just drink my water while I'm doing the commentary. It's actually nasty to always uh, you know, pause it, take a drink, wait a second before it goes again, and then well, like it's just like. A whatever um, but yeah so we are now building the first little hut here and you've seen that I made um, this door way smaller than it actually is uh, in order to make sure that this looks uh, a lot nicer and also I have to say this chimney, uh, chimney is is oh god this chimney was only a test and for whatever reason it's always with these kind of little tests um, they just keep being there and I totally forgot to remove it I wanted to exchange that with the actual ones like it's not really fitting in terms of uh, look and feel here, so I, I definitely have to do this later on uh, and, and remove it and exchange it with a custom-made uh, Shire-esque uh, chimney, I should say. <laughs> but yeah, for the moment that should be should be fine. But here you can see um, what is going to be like. 
And I have to say, it looks so cool. I, I, I can't wait to see the animals roaming around in here. And uh, yeah, just in, in general, like a picturesque scene, it looks super cool. And I had a lot of fun building it, like really getting the vibe translated. And all of a sudden, I really want to have people roaming around in here. I would love to just have uh, staff members being dressed as hobbits and then <laughs> just like, have them moving in here. So it would be cool. But yeah, well, we, we don't have them. Uh, we have to we have to live for what we have to live, you know. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, there is there is uh, quite a bit I still want to talk about uh, in regard to these movie habitats. So I'm a, I don't know why, but I I kind of stumbled into it without actually planning it. Um, like I, I had some ideas, but when I was making the Planet of the Apes, that kind of went through the roof. Um, I had the idea that this is part of my Yosemite Valley Zoo, but all of a sudden I I went nuts and uh, I think we can all agree that this wouldn't have been a nice ad addition to Yosemite Valley because Yosemite Valley still has a lot more realism to it and is not as fantasy-esque and whatever. But in um, in contrast to what I did in uh, Planet Coaster, where I had the I felt like Camel Kingdom was totally fantasy-ish and people got some issues with the fact that it was too fantasy-ish and, you know, um, I, I didn't really had a clear line in, in being realistic or, like, letting myself go to the fantasy vibe and just being creative. And I wanted to change this for Planet Zoo from the very beginning and I, f I feel like that this very coincidence um, with Planet of the Apes and then deciding to go for movie habitats uh, in general was the pretty much the right decision because it, it definitely is something that you need to uh, focus on um, in one or two episodes and then let go you know it, it's nothing you can you I, I, will, I won't do like a full Lord of the Rings uh, Lord of the Rings habitat in or like park or movie or whatever because and this is what I wanted to go for there is already um, someone building a, a Hobbiton Zoo so I will put the link down in the description you can check this out if you want because I definitely um, would recommend to uh, watch Wix uh, he's a cool really cool uh, creator and uh, and he built definitely some cool stuff in Planet Coast already and so he is doing as well in Planet Zoo now um, that said I, I did obviously not want to copy him honestly um, I have to admit that I didn't even know about his uh, series at all before someone was mentioning it in my Discord when I was showing some early pictures uh, of this build here. Uh, that said, though, by the way, if you're new here or if you if you're still a a viewer for some kind of uh, a month or whatever, there is a Discord, and lately it got a lot more important to be in there. Well, not important though, but more interesting um, because I. I think I, I did a good job in, in reshaping a little bit of, of what it is for and yeah, if you want to have all the information about my videos and you want to have some early screenshots and stuff, I highly recommend to join in there. It's a pretty calm place, so it's, you know, you don't have to be super active to get uh, track of what's going on. Um, but every now and then there are some pretty cool discussions going on and uh, everyone is super helpful. If you need some tips and tricks and some feedback, people will give it to you. And uh, also, if you want to see some kind of my projects um, in the making before I re uh, release them to YouTube, you can see them in there as well because I'm constantly sharing screenshots and, and teasers in order to get your feedback, like the feedback of my core people. And yeah, so this is a little disclaimer. If you want to, if you want to be part of it, uh, make sure to join because then you get stuff like that. But anyways, what I wanted to say, uh, only because I shared that picture, someone was mentioning uh, that Wix was doing um, this uh, as well. And um, a few days earlier, I saw that actually. But yeah, it was really nice that he kind of uh, reminded me of that project because I always want to give people the exposure that they deserve. And um, yeah, they uh, Wix definitely deserves this because uh, yeah, it's a cool project. And as I said, it's totally different from what I do. Mine is totally focused on uh, delivering one specific habitat to the movie. Uh, and not translating the movie into a park or a zoo or a full experience. That said, it's time about uh, to talk about what is going to happen in the second episode. And now, the first one was super playful and super happy and we are going to make the Shire. And the second one will be the total opposite. We are going to go into something dark, into something very nasty, ugly, uh, desaturated. I'm even thinking of making the, the video desaturated because it would fit so much of the vibe. And this will be exactly on the other hand side. So we are in the end having some kind of yin and yang habitat. I saw someone doing that and I, I love the idea so much that I wanted to translate that into this idea um, in a way. And my idea was to have this yin and yang idea uh, somehow um, reflecting the yin and yang of the positiveness and negativeness or uh, positive and bad vibes of Lord of the Rings. Uh, because even though 
uh, some of the some of the areas uh, that Frodo, Sam, and uh, Gollum are going to discover, even though they're very very bad and very dark, um, they do play a role in actually the opposite of the Shire. So while the Shire reflects the positiveness and um, the playfulness of the world, uh, the other parts uh, exactly do the opposite in the opposite way, which I find uh, very interesting uh, because it always it always gives you the idea that it's not all positive and all negative. It's um, you know, there's a contrast in there, yes, but there is a, a path that connects both of them, you know, and this is what they discover over the course of the movie um, to then have the final big relief. But, you know, as Frodo is uh, really struggling to understand or to basically to convince himself to throw it into um, into the lava, into the volcano, um, and some really doing a good job in, in finally helping out his friend. You can really see that this is like the, the whole path between good and bad um, is, is not like, you know, black or white. And there, there is, a, the, you know, there is a kind of a, um, yeah, there's the, basically there, there is something happening over the course of the movies and there is uh, something forming um, in between the positiveness and negativeness of Frodo, for example. And this is the same one I want to reflect in this habitat also just, a lot closer to each other than with the movie. I don't want to build like Middle Earth or whatever. Not gonna happen. Uh, so, well, if I would, I could stay at home for like the next three years. Totally easy, but nope, uh, not gonna happen. So yeah, I just, yeah, well, whatever. Uh, but I think you you guys did understand what I meant, and it's uh, kind of hard to translate. It's not not because of language. It's only because I I found it a bit hard to understand uh, to to kind of explain what I meant here because it's highly philosophical yeah that's the word um, in in kind of trying to interpret the movie in a way that it works as a habitat but at the end of the day it's just a game okay so it's I try to do something that you guys like I try to do something that you guys uh, uh, can enjoy and, and watch and um, yeah maybe also give some feedback what you think about that also that's something I totally forgot so I really hope you guys are coming the hell out of it and, and give me some ideas and uh, some feedback to what you think um, about this movie Habitat and uh, yeah also what you would love to see in the second episode because again I, I didn't really say what I want to do so I, I would love to hear what you guys think I'm going to do uh, even though I'm Again, I don't know what I include in the thumbnail. Maybe I give you already a little hint uh, that could be happening so you know what's going to happen. But yeah, so please let me know in the comments down below what you think about this whole thing, uh, this whole project. And are you happy with the choice of Lord of the Rings as a topic for a movie habitat? And yeah, maybe you have a better idea which kind of animals could go in here. Also, very much welcome if you guys want to see that uh, or want to help me out in that. So yeah, and definitely this is something I... I really would love to watch into, uh, look into, and uh, yeah, also um, join the conversation down below. Also, let me know what's your favorite part of Lord of the Rings. Uh, which is your favorite movie? Um, did you read the books or did you only watch the movies? And um, yeah, so what's your what's your kind of connection to Lord of the Rings? Are you a big fan of it? Are you like a die-hard fan, or have you just watched the movies and liked them? And do you also have kind of a, a connection to it as I have, like because I, I was younger when I watched them and uh, in fact, actually, um, it's it's more or less like a fun fact. One of my best friends, um, he invited us to the cinema uh, for all the three years of the movie. So every year in December, because his birthday is the 20th of December and that was um, likely the week when Lord of the Rings was released. I mean, yeah, sure, they know how to make money, right? So they go into the Christmas business. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the reason why uh, I always went to the cinema with them. So I will always connect this movie with my friends and uh, with the experience in the cinema. And also, sad story, it was the last movie I watched in my local cinema before it closed for forever uh, because yeah well it's too small too less uh, income and uh, yeah just in general problematic uh, atmosphere um, because there's there are just not enough people living in the hometown anymore to make a sustainable uh, cinema working and so that's why all the little kids and children now move, need to move to or not move but need to go to another town which is quite a quite a journey for them uh, to be honest and uh, that's in Germany well that's kind of a little side story here. Sorry for that. Uh, in case you didn't, uh, or you haven't been interested, well, here you go. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So um, that's basically it about uh, the Shire. There's not much more in it here um, other than just uh, forming some stuff. I will include uh, some nice cinematics at the end now.
and trying to avoid to spoil too much of what is going to happen in the next one. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. First episode, make sure again uh, to, to stay here. Um, sub to the channel and uh, make sure to join my Discord if you want to have some, some spoilers and little teasers. And uh, yeah, just make sure to stay with us and expect the next episode to be dropping, I think it's fair to say, within March. Uh, that's something I definitely will do. And uh, yeah, maybe if there is DLC news already in between, um, I'm going to try to implement that as best as possible. So if, okay, little disclaimer here. So if there is going to be DLC news dropping and that would potentially change this project dramatically, uh, the second episode will be postponed then and I will do some changes on that and kind of implement that into the second episode. But if not, or if the changes are nice but not usable for that one, you can expect this to be happening uh, prior to the DLC release. If there is a DLC even coming, because we have to still, I wanted to avoid that as much as possible in this episode, and I will try to avoid this as much as possible in all the other videos. I have said enough on my community wall, I think that's it. Um, but yeah, uh, who knows if the DLC will be dropping as it was planned, because, you know, we have to, we have to wait and see how the actual situation at the moment uh, works and so we were all expecting that there could be some news because the the normal frontier schedule is always um, or has been always for Planet Coaster and other DLCs and stuff every three to four months so it is about time but yeah you never know. Uh, that said I, I just want to give you the idea that I was doing that. Now expect some nice little cinematics and then we are good to go for the first episode and make sure to stay with us for the second one. Until then, have a good time, stay safe everyone, and uh, yeah, enjoy your time at home, I guess. <laughs> See you. Bye, guys.